Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and break them down into bite-sized pieces. Today, interesting stuff. And it's not just what's going on in the cryptocurrency digital asset market, but what's going on in th the traditional market. So first up, one trillion in housing bonds, U.S. real estate crisis held back by the Fed's mortgage purchases. So this, on top of all the securities that it owns, on top of all the quantitative easing, can only lead to one thing disaster. Also, another hard fork is coming up for Bitcoin Cash, and that means it could soon drop out of the top 10 crypto ranking. We're going to go over what the heck is going on because forks are no fun. Also, Polkadot-based DeFi project plows ahead and 205 million has already been staked on Staffy. And this could be one of the reasons why Polkadot is one of the few projects that's actually up in today's Red Sea. And lastly, we'll go over Q of the day. We're just going to talk about the upcoming U.S. presidential election and what you can expect as far as the volatility and if you should take it out into stable coins. We'll do that at the very end. Before we move on, I'm happy to announce part of the proceeds from all the digital asset news videos are going to help a charitable foundation called Dog Is My Co-Pilot. And what they do is they take dogs and cats from high kill shelters, like the city that I live in right now, El Paso, Texas, and they fly them to different parts of the country where there are not as many dogs and cats that are prevalent. So they will take them from Texas and they'll fly them to other areas of the country, such as Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming, uh, where the shelters are not as packed. So if you want to learn more about that, the website is dogcopilot.org, and it will also be in the description of every one of my videos moving forward. All right, so let's break in the market. So today it is September 3rd. It is high noon Texas time, and what the heck is going on? Nice little sea of red. So Bitcoin down almost 6%, 10,700. What are you going to do? I thought it would uh, stay above 11, but here we are. And actually, I was pretty hopeful yesterday that it would go above 12, and uh Hey, here we are. Ethereum just barely above 400. I got to tell you, I'm happy with that because it was uh, it was reaching the peak at, at almost 470, 480, somewhere around there. I thought it would fall below 400, but here we are. So I'm pretty happy about that. Tether is Tether. XRP, hey, one good thing. It, uh, it's only down 4.8% at 26 cents. Watch out. Polkadot is up and is one of the few projects that is up at 4%. And we're going to talk about potentially why that could be. Chain link down, Bitcoin Cash, I mean, everything's down across the board. We don't have to uh, dwell on this. Tron is up 33%. That could be uh, because of its new app that is in the uh, Google Play Store or as far as wallets, and it looks fantastic. Up 33%. So congratulations to all you Tron holders. You're one of the few that are actually making it. And everything else is down. Uh, NEM is up for some reason. Urine.finance, Finance, their DeFi product, at a whopping 32,000, which we talked about uh, a couple days ago. So congratulations to Urine.Finance. Finance. Let's see how long that can last, and uh, off we go. So before we break into today's top stories, let's take a look what's going on in the traditional market. So a little bit of a decline if we take a look at the S&P 500 uh, just for today. So we I think we opened it up around 35.64, and then a little bit of a tumble and a little rally and then a tumble, which right here doesn't look too bad. Let's take a look at the five day, and that looks pretty massive. So here we are, 3579, and just a big, huge sell off. What the heck is going on? Well, we'll get into that in a second. Let's get a quick poll. I just asked the question uh, today's crypto market dip has my hands shaky, even, or strong? And the vast majority say that they are strong. And I, I wrote, I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to see it because in our community, uh, a drop of 10% isn't a big deal. But a drop at 10% in the traditional market, like you would see, like with the S&P 500, you know, down 3% or 5%, people are losing their minds right now, and they are selling like crazy. And I got to tell you, if you are in the traditional market and just coming over, welcome. This is not a big deal. Don't worry. Don't panic. Everything's going to be okay. There's huge swings on the on the uh, on the uptick. Just got to wait a little bit. So if you are coming over from the traditional market and you have lost maybe three to five percent, not a big deal. This is what we call a Thursday. We don't care. What we are waiting for is the big upswing, and that is going to happen. Just sit around, wait a while, everything will be all right. But the real question is, is how low can this actually go? Well, let's dive in. So first up, $1 trillion in housing bonds, U.S. real estate crisis held back by Fed's mortgage purchases. This is scary. This is one of those things that really does concern me because the government is trying to do its best. The Fed is trying to do its best. They're trying to stave off economic collapse. And this is the best they can do. But I have to tell you, there's no end in sight for what's going to happen. And I only see dark days ahead. I just do. Uh, I don't, I'm not a very, 
I'm usually a pretty optimistic guy. Really, I am. But uh, with this going on, I just don't see any way around it. Anyhow, emergency powers to stop landlords nationwide from evicting tenants has been enacted by the CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Moreover, the Federal Reserve has purchased $1 trillion in mortgage bonds since March. $1 trillion, that's with a T, capturing 30% of the country's outstanding mortgage bonds. So you have to understand, everything is relative. So this is good for the people who were laid off, who could not get unemployment, who are who did get unemployment, but now that has been slashed in by a half or a third or something like that. And of course, Congress, if you're not from the U.S., uh, Congress went to go vote on that bill and they couldn't come to resolution. So they just took a vacation and said, ah, we'll get to it later. <laughs> Swear to God, that's exactly what happened. So all these people are in, are in the lurch and they're waiting for a bailout because there's a lot of different small businesses that have been closed. Getting unemployment has been diminished. So it's pretty hard to pay for all your bills when you have no job when you have no checks coming in, when you have nothing to really fall back on, and you're expecting the government to kind of help you out, bail you out, just like they bailed their friends out and all the big businesses. Well, guess what? They're not going to do it because their vacation was much more important than you. So here's what's happening. The Fed is stepping in and they're buying everything up, and that is going to be a massive problem going on down the road. So you have to look at it like if you have people who can't pay their rent, that's one thing. So they say, okay, well, don't pay the rent, but they won't evict you. Now it goes to the next higher level, which is the people who actually own the buildings. And yes, they're in a, a much better position to handle this, this economic downturn, but for how long? Because guess what? When renters can't pay the rent, now the person who owns the building says, okay, well, let's see what we can do here if we don't get 10% or 20% or 30% of the people who can pay. Well, now I have 70% of income coming in. Well, guess what? Taxes are still due. You still have to pay uh, water, gas, and electricity if that is what is provided for your tenants. And on top of that, you if you don't own the building outright, well, guess what? You got to pay the bank. And the bank says, hey, sorry, uh, for uh, commercial loans, there is no forgiveness policy. We only do that for the retail. So now what do you have? Now you got a problem because you gotta, you're got you gonna have a lot of default loans. And uh, I only see that happening, not only for this, but just for the average Joe Blow trying to keep up with the Joneses, getting a new house, so on and so forth. So I see nothing but problems. Anyhow, moving on. All across the country, homeowners and rental tenants are facing a crisis and the signs are showing in a number of hard hit states. And before I move on, I don't know where you're at in the world, uh, but if, if you're in the US or you're in Europe, Canada, Mexico, wherever else, um, do me a favor, take a look at the prices of houses in your area. And you'll see that in a lot of places, especially in the US, the prices of houses are actually going up. Why is that? It's because people think that they that this is the best time to buy uh, because they can pick up these houses that are cheap. And guess what happens? The price of the house actually has increased. I've had friends who have actually tried to get houses right now because not not just for investment properties, just for like an upgrade. You know, the family's you know increasing, so they want to get a bigger house. And guess what happens? So they go to get a house and they say, oh well, it's at you know two hundred thousand right now. They come back a week later, uh, you know, trying to you know jockey for a position. And guess what? Now it's two hundred thirty thousand. What the heck happened? Oh well. The builder just increased the price because there's been so much demand. Where's the demand coming from? Well, it's all the people who want to get for investment properties because they think this is like 2008 and they're going to get a bunch of cheap houses and then, and then the price is going to increase. That's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is there's going to be a bunch of defaults. And even the agent told my friend, just give it six months to a year, come back and buy this house at 40% off because they're going to all default on the loans. <sighs> so that's a problem. But uh, I could be wrong, but uh, who knows? All right. Lastly, it states international investors who invested in U.S. real estate prior to COVID-19 are now left holding the bag, according to a number of reports. A number of real estate proponents believe the U.S. housing market is rebounding, but most people don't understand. The Federal Reserve is trying to keep the real estate market afloat. And that note was already done. And then lastly, states analysts for Morgan Stanley say that the Fed is purchasing these outstanding mortgage bonds at 8x the rate. Uh, it is leveraged in the past. Moreover, Fed board members have disclosed the pace will remain at least at the current pace. And distressed U.S. properties are coming in 2021, which I just talked about. So I could go on with this article, 
but it gets even more grim, uh, but you get the whole gist of it. I don't need to beat a dead horse. Uh, 2021, I think, is going to be an awful time for housing, for small business, and for just business in general and the, and the traditional market. I do see uh, an uptick for cryptocurrency digital assets, especially for a safe haven assets such as Bitcoin, because there's going to be so much volatility. And uh, if you don't think there's volatility coming, wait till the presidential election. And I'll talk about that in a bit. Let's move on. Next up, another hard fork looming. Bitcoin Cash could soon drop out of the top 10. Bummer. All right, so what's going on? There are two opposing opposing factions within the major players that support the Bcash Bitcoin Cash network. The Bitcoin Cash ABC and the BCHN. The BC this is like I was back in the military. There's so many acronyms. The BCH ABC factions have been advocating for a minor tax whereby about 8% of the minor rewards are deducted and dedicated to the betterment of the Bitcoin Cash network, which seems kind of reasonable. 8% tax and we're going to try to improve the network. We're going to go this for the miners. And, uh, you know, on one side, they're like, cool, we'll do that. On the other hand, the BCHN faction says, nope, I'm not going to do that. So the standoff now has spiraled out of control, leading to the ABC faction declaring intentions to force a uh, Bitcoin Cash hard fork on November 15th of this year. If effective, the hard fork would result in a chain split and create a separate chain, just like it happened back in 2018 when it results in the creation of the Bitcoin SV, and we all know how fantastic that went. Although, uh, I will say this, as far as the Bitcoin SV uh, fork, it is in the top 10. So, uh, you know, I thought it was gonna be awful, and I was wrong about that, because it still sticks around. I mean, now it's in the, in, it's in the 12, but every time I see Bitcoin SV, I'm just like, I don't know why it's there. I just don't know. Anyhow, so here's my final thoughts on that. Uh, I'm sick of these forks. I'm tired of uh, the confusion. I'm really tired of uh, new individuals coming in who are like, hey, what's uh, we got Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV. I got a new one coming up. I got Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Tomato, Bitcoin Potato Foot. What the hell's going on? And I'm like, you know what? Uh, just stick with the original. That's all I can tell you. Like, which one's the original? Because when I go to Bitcoin.com, that's Bitcoin Cash, right? And everybody's confused. I just wish it could consolidate into one Bitcoin, but uh, here we are. Uh, I think it's a mistake, but people are going to have their differences, and it's what I really hate. And uh, I, I don't know if there's any resolution about it, but uh, let me know what you thought in the, in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, Polkadot based DeFi project plows ahead. 205 million staked on Staffy. Uh, what a great picture. Plows ahead. Aha. Anyhow, nearly 2,000 addresses have staked 205 million on the Polkadot based DeFi project Staffy. First of all, I don't know what Staffy is. Uh, it sounds like a pretty good thing. DeFi, that's like the new hot thing, right? Uh, maybe it would be good to invest in. I have no idea, but uh, it looks like it's already overbought. I'll get into that in a second. So Staffy lets users stake their proof of stake tokens and gives them receipts of the token, which they can use then use elsewhere in crypto. Staffy is a DeFi app built on Polkadot, has locked staking tokens worth 205 million. That's a lot of money in a very short amount of time bonded across only 1700 plus addresses that's not a lot of people 1700 addresses and who knows how many are duplicates or who how many people own like 5 10 20 of those who knows scary the project allows proof of stake token holders to stake their assets and provides them with tokens that represent these stake positions atom tokens become our atom polka dots dot tokens become our dot and many other uh, proof of stake blockchains it's a, so it's the same thing just like what they're doing with, with urine, compound, and synthetics. Uh, with urine, you got YUSD. Compound, you got CUSD. And synthetics, it's synthetic USD. Uh, same type of thing. So that's how it works as far as staking and all, all those things go. The token stake on Staffy include Polkadot, Kasuma, KSM, Tezos, hey, Cosmos, Matic, Kava, and Harmony. Interesting. Matic. That was supposed to be for uh, Ethereum. So good to see that uh, it's branching off. Polkadot's making waves. Launch on Polkadot is favorable in the current Ethereum-only DeFi sector as gas fees in the network reach 500 GUE this week. That's a lot of money. And I've heard nothing but problems as far as like the Ethereum uh, gas prices. So there's a nice little website I always like to go to uh, because it's a visual, visual type of thing. It's called txstreet.com. And you can see the um, actions and uh, all the different um, things that are actually happening as far as like transactions for Ethereum. 
Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. So if you take a look at Ethereum right now, it you know pretty active little sector, right? Here's the medium fee. Here's the transaction pool count, transaction per second. Only 11 transactions per second. That's pretty low, honestly. So, and you can just see all the different. So here's Compound, Zero uh, X, Augur, uh, Tether, <laughs> Tether, Matic, uh, Uniswap, Curve, all those things. So it's pretty cool how it all lays it all out. And this has just been growing and growing and growing. So it's pretty active, right? Let's take a look at Bitcoin. What's going on over there? So Bitcoin, of course, not too much. It's all stacked up every 10 minutes. And here's what's happening. And it's very slow. Let's just say that. Transaction per second, 4.36. What are you going to do? But yeah, slow goes the boat. Let's take a look at Bitcoin Cash. See how fast that's moving around. Editor, please put in cricket noises. And that's Bitcoin Cash. So if they're going to have a split, I can only imagine how fantastic that's going to go. Anyhow, let's go back. Moreover, this is pretty interesting. Uh, Ethereum's processing speed is around 10 to 15 transactions per second. Uh, while Polkadot can reportedly scale up to 100,000 to 1 million TPS by implementing parallel blockchains. Now, if anybody has any type of documentation or any type of uh, website or some type of uh, PDF that they can point me to that proves this, I would love to see it because that's amazing right now. Um, if they can do that, maybe that's one of the reasons why it went up all the way to number six, number five on the uh, crypto market cap. So that'd be very interesting to see. They can do that. That's awesome. Several other dApps are also set to launch in Polkadot, including Akala and Snowfork. I'm not going to go into those. I will link this article in the description. You can check it out. Staffy has moved to the final phase of the mainnet launch with the staking drop, similar to airdrop, of a 2% supply of its governance token, FIS, to existing stakeholders. And that's how this whole DeFi thing works, right? Mm -hmm. So you're able to stake your coins, they're going to say, thanks so much. Here's our governance token. And that governance token will be worth X amount of dollars. Like if you look at Sushi, that went from, well, actually it went from like a hundred something dollars. And then the um, all the stakeholders sold off. Then it went to three, to five, to seven. I don't know what it is right now. But that's the whole thing. The governance token uh, causing liquidity and getting all that um, price action so you can actually make them more money. But reportedly the airdrop for FIS was oversubscribed by 7X. So there you go. DeFi, in my humble opinion, is going to be huge. It's just right now it's very dangerous. So you got to be like a, uh, a shark. You got to get in and get out because if you stick around too much longer, too long, you're going to be holding a lot of bags. Just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to Q of the day. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the office for the Q of the day. So this one comes to us from Joy. And Joy asks, a, it's a pretty interesting question. Uh, especially with what's going to happen in the next couple of months. She says, hey, Dan, watch your videos. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Uh, she said, you said that you are not a trader. That is very true. And uh, you hold your crypto assets. And I mostly just hold my cryptos as well. However, because I see it, it's a long-term investment. But with the U.S. election coming up, if you don't know, if you're not from the United States, we're about to have uh, our four-year election for the president of the United States. And that's going to happen in November. So we are in September. So September, October, November is going to happen. So there's a lot of volatility right now, which is usually what happens before an election. But uh, Joy says, do you think it's a good idea to just hold or take the profits for now and re-enter the market a few months after the election? I saw your video about exit strategies and it was very helpful, but wanted your opinion about this strategy during the election period as it might get volatile. I've only been in the crypto space for about four months, so I don't know how the U.S. election will affect the market. I entered Bitcoin at 9,500. Congratulations. Ethereum at 250. Uh, Link at uh, $8 and Theta at 25 cents. Do you think it may be okay to just write out the ups and downs of the market, or do you think it may be better to exit with profits? Great question. So uh, the answer is it really depends on, on who you're talking to. Um, if you are talking to a trader, they're always telling you to take profits. And I got to tell you, um, I got to, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I got to tell you. Uh, it only makes sense at some point to take some profits just to make sure that you're not sitting on the sidelines going, man, I, I could have taken, you know, a couple hundred bucks out of here or a couple of thousand dollars, whatever it is. So if you want to take profits, take profits. Uh, that's not, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I mean, I took profits uh, for chain links. I knew it went up pretty high. thought it might come down a little bit. So much it did. So... But the next question really comes down to, uh, do I put things into stable coins uh, during the whole presidential election because, because it is so volatile? So the thing you have to understand is that uh, volatility 
is what we'd like to see here in the crypto market. Uh, we'd like to see crypto, I mean, well, I'd like to see uh, more of the um, volatility in the traditional space and in the, in the economy and in the traditional market, because the more volatility we see over there, the more people get nervous and they look for safe haven assets or for alternative investments and they come to cryptocurrency. So I like to see that. However, uh, to answer your question about how's it going to affect as far as the presidential elections, I had to take a look at, uh, there was a Forbes article and it talked about how, let me pull this up. Here's how the stock market has performed before, during, and after presidential elections. And as you can see, uh, the growth of the dollar invested in the S&P 500, January 1926, to December 2019, uh, it's only gone up. Now there's been there's been some dips after the election. You can see uh, between Clinton and Bush, there was a huge drop off, and then Bush to Obama. However, you have to remember this was in uh, 2008 when there was a huge economic recession and the different uh, market collapse. So that might not have been so much with the actual election itself, but what was going on with the overall economy. And then from Obama to Trump, um, this is where it gets kind of interesting because in the article it states historically. Volatility in the stock market is elevated in the months leading up to an election, which is right now. So right now is the perfect opportunity for volatility. And we can see it uh, because in the stock market, most people are losing their minds. Uh, they're like, oh my God, 3.5% or 4%, what are we going to do? We should start jumping off, off towers. Don't, don't do that. But uh, I mean, they are freaking out over 4, 5, 6% losses. And like I always say, you know, if, if, if you think that's a bad day, in crypto, we just call it a Tuesday. So I don't know what you're whining about. That's just me. Anyhow, it goes on and says, beware of bold predictions, recall the 2016 uh, election. So if you don't remember in 2016, or if you're not in the United States, uh, in 2016, uh, Hillary Clinton was pegged to beat the pants off of Donald Trump. And of course she lost uh, the uh, electoral college and uh, Trump was put into office. So before, or the night of the 2016 election, as more states began reporting uh, that a Trump, victim, a Trump victory was gonna become likely, the stock market sank rapidly, and the S&P 500 fell by more than 5% in pre-market trading, triggering the circuit breaker, which caused everything to shut down, which is pretty awesome. But what's, what's even more hilarious is that by the time uh, the, mar or the market closed the day after the election, uh, the index was up over 1%. But if you do a Google search for 2016 Trump win and the stock market returns, uh, the results that you're gonna get from Google, it's gonna talk about instant recession, the market tanking, the stock sinking, and of course, this is all published before November 8th, 2016, of course. Uh, so it, it was all doom and gloom because uh, you know the pre this new president is going to take over. And guess what? Uh, the return, the average annual price return in 2019 was uh, 14%. So the thing is, all about these different factors, you know, as far as like the presidential election, I don't know who's going to win. I don't think anybody does. I mean. That's just how it works. If I did know who, who would win, I would probably go back to Vegas and uh, put some money on the winner because you can do that in Vegas, but you can't. So the, the thing is, I wouldn't take money out because here's here's a scenario that, that, that plays out in my mind. Um, you take your money out, you put in stable coins, right? And then whoever wins, then the stock market goes up for some reason and they say, okay, we want that guy. And then the cryptocurrency market is like, oh, okay, well, you know, we're also gonna you know follow suit and we also go up, everybody's happy. Well, the money that you put into stable coins, let's say Bitcoin was at 12,000, or actually, who knows, it could be at 9,000. Let's say it's at 9,000, and all of a sudden overnight, it goes up 10, to 10,000. Well, now you just lost 1,000 bucks. I mean, essentially, that's, that's what happened to get back into the same positions that you did with Bitcoin. However, opposite is true. You could, you know, take everything out, put into stable coins, see a, see a massive pullback, and then, you know, uh, put it in, you're like, I'm a genius. Depends on if you're a trader or not. Again, it's all about who you ask. Me personally, I am going to, I do not care. I honestly don't care who wins. Uh, so wherever we go um, for, for, for this position, I don't care if it goes up, I don't care if it goes down. Just like today, I could care less about the market. I just sit back and I think to myself, man, I'm glad I'm not trading. I'm glad I'm not leverage trading. and I'm glad I don't have those positions that I have to do. Um, that's it. Now, am I perfect at this? No, I probably should take more profits at some point. I just don't uh, because I just let it sit. Uh, just, it's just my mentality, the way that I do things. Like I talked about yesterday, when I invest in land, I just put money in land. I just let it sit there. And then, you know, five, 10 years later, I come back and go, well, how much is it worth now? Oh, great. Made some money. And that's, that's pretty much it. Um, so for me, I'm just going to sit back, let it all, 
let it all, uh, whatever happens, happens, just like today. And then uh, we'll see what happens in one to three years. That's what I got. All right, thanks so much for the question. Let's jump back. All right, hope that answers some questions. Uh, for the final segment, just want to let you know that um, for all my subscribers, I want to say thanks so much for joining up. If you don't know, there's a join now button on the bottom right there. It's a buck ninety-nine. You don't get anything special. I just do random shout outs. So random shout outs for the day. Uh, for the new ones, Doug Lemley. Hello, Melissa Davis, Johnny Henderson, Joey Serena. Who else we got? Mark. That's a good one. <laughs> Dreamer. All right, soft. My man. Barry Belasco and Amuse Web Design. He's helping me with the uh, actual website that I need to build, which uh, I'm actually starting on starting on yesterday, actually. So we'll see how that goes. That'll be a free website for education so people can learn more about blockchain, cryptocurrency, digital assets. And I'll let everybody know when that is completed. So thanks a lot for sticking around. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. I don't know which ones. YouTube kind of controls that, just like they control all the uh, crappy ads you might have seen. If you didn't like the ad that you saw and it was a scam, report it to YouTube. They'd love to hear from you. And uh, that's it for today. So thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. See you on the next one. Hopefully tomorrow is more of a green.